What's up? So, what I'm going to be doing today and showing you how to do is to pin and weld a muzzle brake in order to bring the overall length of your barrel to the legal 16 inch limit. Uh, the gun I'm doing is an upper, uh, it's a Colt upper uh, equipped with a nice nice armament rail, foregrip, Colt factory 14 and a half inch, one and seven inch, five, five, six barrel. Uh, it's basically an M4 clone. I got your Maytech rear sight. I guess technically that BCM charging handle wasn't right, but whatever. Uh, we got an aim point uh, H1 on there and a Silencer Co. Uh, ASR flash hider. Uh, the reason I'm using that is because I have a Silencer Co. Spec War 556 and 30 cal can, so I like the ability to be able to suppress the gun. Uh, I was using this on a registered SBR lower, but now that I'm moving out of state, uh, I didn't go ahead and file the paperwork in order to transport that SBR uh, lower across state lines. So if I want to take the 14.5, I'm going to have to pin and weld this muzzle brake in order to put it on a regular standard uh, Title One. Uh, AR lower. So, uh, what I'm going to be using to do this is you can use uh, high temp silver solder or you can do a weld all the way around the muzzle brake onto the barrel, but in my opinion, that would look retarded and uh, would put too much heat into that barrel, uh, ruining its properties more than likely. So I'm going to be choosing the pin and weld uh, method. What this consists of is using a drill bit to drill into the flat of your muzzle brake here. Uh, after I drill a hole into that, I will put it back on the barrel to uh, center it where it's going to be. I'll run the drill bit back in again in order to drill into those threads. Then I will insert this hardened pin. Uh, after I put the pin in, I will, I'm going to use a TIG welder to weld the top of that and close it in, thus making it legal because you won't be able to take that muzzle brake off without some uh, drilling, cutting, uh, whatever. So it's going to classify it as a permanent uh, flash hider. Uh, I've already went to the liberty of me measuring from the breech face all the way to the tip of this flash hider and it is over 16 inches. So let me get this chucked up in the vise and we'll pop this off. The flash hider chucked up here in the vise, I uh, made sure not to tighten it on these uh, ratcheting teeth so it won't mess up the interface between the suppressor. Same thing with these uh, Acme threads uh, which initially shoulder the can. Uh, as well as the tuning forks. If you went to tighten them there, you would run the risk of pushing those in and then when you go to shoot it, you know, might have uh, bad things happen to you. So, well, let me show you what part we are going to drill. I have it chucked up in the vise on the rounded side, which isn't ideal, but it's gonna be easiest to drill here on the flat part. So I'm going to use this center punch in order to make my hole. All right, let's see what we got there. It's not perfectly centered. I've went to the liberty of doing it off camera, but as you can see, this center punch hole is a little bit better centered than before. Uh, so now I am going to get my drill bit and uh, get the drill in this sucker. It would be easier to drill this in a drill press, but rather than me going through the hassle of clearing the drill press off, getting it chucked up just perfect, uh, I'm just going to use my hand drill. Uh, now I have the drill bit which corresponds to my uh, hardened pin. Uh, if anything, you want it to 
be as tight of a fit as possible so in theory once I drill this hole the pin won't be able to be inserted by hand but it will need me to tap that pin in in order to get a press fit which isn't required but in my opinion is uh, just doing the job right now to help with my drilling after I initially get my hole started I'm going to use some machine oil that'll help lubricate the bit and uh, make it easier on this drill so let me go to my center punch hole if you've never used the center punch let me be the first to tell you that it makes life way easier than trying to drill this onto a flat surface with no starter hole the center punch hole helps you index and uh, get a good get a good bite on it all right so I got my hole started now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some machine oil in there that'll help cool down the bit and uh, as well as helping it slip through there a little easier and this muzzle brake is pretty thick so periodically stopping and adding more sh machine oil will keep the heat out of it and it'll prevent this uh, bit from breaking since this bit is pretty damn thin so with the amount of pressure you got to push down with you run the chance of snapping the bit all right we're through clear that off let's take a look as you can see i got my hole perfectly centered on that flat uh let's get our pin right here and see how she fits if at all okay as you can see it'll start so i just went to reinstall my flash hider on the barrel and i'm not sure how how well you can see this right here but from me drilling through it has created a burr on the inside part of the flash hider so i'm going to use a hardened steel pick and uh try to take off that burr if I have to, I'll uh, get a small file in there and uh, see if I can clean it up so it's going to go on. Let's try it now. Getting a little bit of resistance. So, I am going to... Doesn't look like it's harming the threads, so let me try tightening it up again. It might clean itself off there. And get the wrench. Get that on my flats here. All right, it looks like that extra leverage helping me get it on there, so. I'll start it back up once I have it seated on there perfectly. I have the flash hider all the way on there tight. As you can see, this uh, this type of flash hider, silencer co, they don't recommend any peel washers or crush washer, which it isn't necessary since it's a flash hider. So if you have a muzzle brake, you will have to uh, time it correctly so you get your ports lined up where you want to. So the next step is what I will do is I'll take my drill here, I'll put that in my hole, and I will mark on my drill bit uh, where uh, the depth of the muzzle brake ends and the threads begin. Uh, I won't, actually I'm probably not going to mark it right now because as long, the threads aren't very deep. So as long as I get a little bite into those for the pin to stick in to keep the muzzle brake permanently welded, uh, I don't think I'll have a problem. Uh, I'm going to try to refrain from using oil for this drill step. That way there's no uh, imperfections when I get a TIG weld it. So let's, just, let's see if I can get a shot of that. All right. So I'm in my hole keeping a visual eye on where my drill bit is that way I uh, know where uh, my depth is
Okay. Now I could tell from the metal flakes coming up out of the drill that I got deep enough to get into those threads. Uh, now I'll hit it one more time, not so much with downward pressure, but just enough to uh, clean up any junk that's in there. Okay. All right, now let me get my pin. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my pin in there. Uh, I'm gonna get a marker. And I am going to mark the depth of my pin so I can cut it down so it's the right length. So I have a little gap at the top of it so my uh, weld has a hole to settle up in. Alright, just to give you an idea of how short that pin actually is, uh, you can see my black mark on there. Uh, the pin doesn't have to be too, too deep uh, in order to uh, be correct. So what I'll do is I will cut on that black line with a Dremel and then I will hand file it the rest of the way down so I can get the most accurate length possible. Just going to use a simple Dremel tool with a cutoff disc. I didn't cut all the way through. That way uh, it doesn't fall and I have to go look for a, an eighth inch uh, length drill bit. That probably is hot, which it is, and I'm burned. Okay, now that I have my pin cut, I'm going to drop it in my hole of my muzzle device. I'm going to check my depth. As you can see, since I didn't cut all the way through, my pin isn't perfectly uh, flat. It also has a little bit of excess length. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and file that down. All right. You want to take your pin, which you probably can't see because it's so small. And uh, rather than rubbing the file on it, I'll take the pin and actually rub it. Uh, this is a bastard file. So you can also call it a, uh, a snow file. For all you Game of Throners out there, you might get the reference. I got my pen all fit the size. As you can see, it's right in there. Uh, I would have liked to make it a little bit shorter for the weld to fill in, but it's pretty much gonna be impossible to get that out without a magnet. So I'm just going to roll with that. I'll uh, show you the welder setup uh, next. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, my uh, pin is bare metal. Uh, I, I'm going to use this little uh, Dremel attachment, little stone type deal, whatever you could use a sanding disc. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to knock some of that finish off on the muzzle brake. That way uh, it doesn't affect my weld. You can see I just knocked down the area around the uh, pin. Nothing too crazy. All right, so the welder setup. This is a Los Cheapos welder. Uh, it does stick welding, TIG welding, and plasma cutting. It's literally like 600 bucks. Uh, is it a Miller or a Lincoln? No, but does it work? Yes, I literally just uh, custom fabbed up an entire turbo setup on my 81 Camaro and you know all those welds are holding up just fine so uh, it's not all about the machine it's more the uh, technique I guess you could say all right as far as the welder setup goes uh, obviously we got a ground to it uh, I just grounded to the gas block I don't care about any scratches this is a tool to me so finish isn't super important I mean I'm not going to try to wreck it on purpose but it's all right uh, as far as the stick I'm going to be using uh, I'm using 70s-6 just a mild steel rod this actually they come in a lot longer lengths this is just some scrap shouldn't need a whole lot to fill this up 
as far as the uh, tip goes, I'm using a 2% thoriated tungsten. Uh, really important on these small welds. Uh, you want to grind that tip of that tungsten to a sharp, sharp point. By getting as small of a tip as possible, you're concentrating your energy. So instead of me having to play around with this weld, it's going to put a lot of heat into it real quick. Got the welder fired up. Uh, when I weld 16 gauge uh, exhaust piping, that's uh, some quality exhaust piping, not like cheap shit you'd get at a parts store. I use like 70 amps, so I'm going to give that a try and see how it goes. I probably need it. I probably should have used less amperage there. Kind of hot. I'm going to turn her down to a little under 60. Alright, I think I got it. I should mention those auto darkening helmets when welding make the biggest difference in the world. Trying to uh, go blind at first with those old school helmets sucks. Alright, so here's my initial weld. As you can see, it definitely got some good heat in there. Uh, at 70 amps, it tr it definitely was putting more heat in it than I wanted. So once I change it down to like mid 50s, uh, I was able to pull it in there and uh, get a nice, good penetrating weld. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that Dremel uh, tool again, and I am going to uh, clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just clean it up a little bit. Uh, just a little excess off the top. If I was doing this for a friend or somebody else, I would uh, take more time in making sure it was cleaned up pretty. But since it's mine, like I said, it's a tool, I could give a shit less what it looks like. As long as it's legal and uh, don't move, we're good to go. So. There it is. Probably put a little bit too much filler rod in there. Uh, could have done with a little bit less. And that shit's so hard when you go to grind it. You can be grinding there all day. So I'm just going to uh, get some cold blue and uh, darken that shit up and uh, call it good to go. Now to finish out that uh, weld, clean it up a little bit, what I'm going to do is... I got some of this Birchwood KC aluminum black on hand. You might say, oh, hey, that's steel. That's not aluminum. Well, guess what? I've used it before and it works. Matches the rest of the finish on the muzzle brake. That weld with that pin located in the threads, this muzzle brake ain't ever going to move again. This is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer, anything like that. Uh, this is, the, is outlined in the ATF's handbook. Uh, like I said, you could fusion weld the outside, silver solder it, or do the method I just did, which I think is the cleanest. This should suffice uh, in the eyes of the ATF. But like I said, read the rule book by yourself. That way you have a perfect understanding of uh, the legalities.